Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Wednesday, December 4th, 2013. If you're listening to this on the radio and wish to watch, please go to www.cadex.com. The third largest reinsurance broker in the world and the one with the highest degree of penetration in China has sacked two employees at its Hong Kong reinsurance office for engaging in what Willis Group calls inappropriate business practices. This is being uh, reported by the Insurance Insider. Uh, Willis supposedly uh, has informed Chinese supervisory authorities of the dismissal of the two people, emphasizing that its clients had not been affected. According to Willis, uh, we recently discovered an incident of inappropriate business practice within our reinsurance division in Hong Kong. More details presumably will come. The European Union has fined eight lenders an unprecedented sum of about 1.7 billion euros or 2.3 billion US this morning for rigging interest rates. German Deutsche Bank involved in rigging the Euribor and Japanese yen Taibor rates was fined a total of 725 million euros and the Société Générale Bank of France was fined 446 million euros. British bank RBS was fined 391 million euros. These uh, fines come after a separate scandal over the rigging of the London LIBOR rate. Now we have the LIBOR rate, uh, we have the uh, Eurobor rate, which is based on the uh, EU's uh, euro dollar, and we have the Japanese yen TIBOR rate. Apparently all three interest rates were rigged. Very interesting. British insurers uh, plan to invest 25 billion British pounds, or 41 billion US, in transport and energy projects in the UK over the next five years. The Finance Ministry in London made this announcement this morning. Uh, boosting private sector infrastructure investment is a priority for the British government as the economic recovery there, which has taken hold, has been fueled largely by consumer spending, which can't last. Many British power stations are due for replacement in the coming years. Roads, railways, and airports are also overcrowded and will be invested in by insurance companies. Here's an interesting uh, bit of information. In addition, uh, Legal and General Insurance, one of the big companies that's going to be making the investment, said recent changes to the European Union solvency regulations known as Solvency II made such investments easier. The terms, according to Legal and General, are now fixed so as to permit long-term infrastructure investment without excessively onerous capital requirements. Well, that's very interesting because, uh, of course, Solvency II has taken forever to get implemented. Casualty reinsurance demand apparently continues to fall. Uh, in the casualty reinsurance market, uh, rate increases have broadly been in the low single-digit range for most classes. Several trends are emerging which are causing concern. One reinsurance underwriter who remained anonymous, according to the Insurance Insider, said, I have a strong gut feeling that it's all going to hell in a handcart. The sheer amount of capacity around means it's only a matter of time before someone breaks ranks and does something stupid. Now, of course, when an underwriter talks about somebody breaking ranks and doing something stupid, that means only one thing, underpricing, setting premiums lower than your competitors in order to attract cash. That is the bane of the existence of insurance companies. They can't help themselves. There was a very rare eight alarm fire in Boston early yesterday. It was at uh, 327 Summer Street in a 100-year-old commercial building that was uh, being renov renovated near the Fort Point Channel. Nobody was injured, but about 155 Boston firemen responded. It took uh, some nine hours to quell the blaze. Damage was estimated at about $2 million. Here's a rare story. A company that owns a tugboat that sank in the Mississippi River in Kentucky has publicly announced that it will pay all of the costs of the accident and ensure that the area is thoroughly cleared of spilled fuel. The Marquette Transportation Company of Pedusa, Kentucky made the announcement last night at a city council meeting in LeClaire, Kentucky. They said, we are fully responsible for all the costs incurred and we plan on making things as good as they were before the accident. The accident involved a tugboat, the Stephen L. Colby, which hit a submerged object on November 25th in the Mississippi River 
and spilled about 90,000 gallons of fuel oil. Here's another interesting story. Iran, of course, seems to be emerging from the uh, Western sanctions yoke, and they have now indirectly challenged uh, Saudi Arabia, the OPEC kingpin, uh, saying this morning that Iran plans to pump as much oil as it can once sanctions on crude oil exports are lifted, even if its extra output means that it's going to drive prices into the basement. Uh, the Saudis now produce about 33% of, of all of OPEC's output right now, and the uh, oil minister said that the country is determined to retain its share under all circumstances. According to the Saudis, we will produce 4 million barrels of oil, which would increase the uh, production rate, even if the price drops to $20 a barrel. The price right now is $120 a barrel. Of course, the Iranians, who desperately need cash, are going to pump as much oil as they can in order to attract income. So good times could be ahead for drivers, not only for drivers, but also for Western economies. There's a calculation somewhere that the drop of uh, each $5 mark in the price of crude oil has a multiplier effect that is quite significant exponentially insofar as gross domestic product for Western economies. And uh, here's a breaking headline. Two homes in China were damaged by falling pieces of a rocket launched on Monday. This prompts calls now for an insurance scheme to cover future damages from the country's ambitious space programs. Uh, this all occurred in uh, Hunan province when a uh, rocket, uh, which was successfully launched, the booster rocket apparently uh, fell as predicted and parts of it disintegrated, damaging two small homes. Um, experts are calling for a program to handle rocket damage compensation. Uh, rather than uh, dealing with each homeowner claim on an individual basis. Uh, the uh, experts say, suppose the rocket wreckage hit a person instead of a house, what would the authorities do? Of course, when you have 1.2 billion people in a country, the likelihood of being hit by a rocket increases. But 180,000 residents near the rocket center were actually physically relocated before the launch of the rocket to ensure that they were not hit. Tell you, it's a different way to do business, it seems, in China. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.